Well everyone, it's time for us to go ahead and compare the iPhone 14 Pro and the iPhone 11 Pro Max and see which specific phone is the better one for you. Now it's very interesting because the 11 Pro Max was the 1000, actually 1099 phone of 2019. The 14 Pro is the you know, more recent $1000 phone. If you want to pick up either one of these phones, the links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and help support the channel at the same time. Now you can see side by side, the 14 Pro is a much smaller phone than the iPhone 11 Pro Max. On the front, the 11 Pro Max has a pretty big 6.5 inch Super Retina OLED display, and it is a pretty good panel. You know, from the day it came out, I thought it was really, really good, but it is a bigger phone. So some people may not prefer a bigger size screen like this. It's kind of up to you whether you want to go this direction or not, but personally, I do like having a little bit of a smaller manageable display like the 14 Pro, but the size of this panel could be an advantage for some people out there. It still has a notch up top, but the iPhone 14 Pro with its, you know, 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED display is better in some ways. Like for one, I like the smaller display. You're getting a little bit less amount of bezel around the display than the 11 Pro Max. You're also getting Pro Motion on the screen, which I think is one of its best features. Having 120 hertz, there's only like four different iPhones that have 120 hertz right now. It's the 14 Pros and the 13 Pros. All other iPhones are at 60 hertz. And this is one of my favorite features about this phone. I mean, it's a very good looking display. Now we have the dynamic island. I don't even think it's that crazy cool of a feature. Like it's all right. I think it was cool or whatever, but just do keep in mind that it's, it's an ongoing process of getting it better, but I just think it protrudes more and I just think it's more in your face than even the notch was, which seems like kind of like a step in the wrong direction in my opinion. Now in terms of thinness and thickness, both are a little, they're a little different in terms of design because the 11 Pro Max had a little bit more of a flat side. The 14 Pro has a, uh, sorry, the 11 Pro Max had a curved side. The 14 Pro has a flat side. Now between both, what I'll tell you is both are very premium feeling phones for the most part. And I don't really think one is actually way thicker or thinner than the other one, but both are still very kind of thick feeling phones. The 11 Pro Max actually had a SIM card tray on the bottom, on the back of it. The 14 Pro does not have a SIM card tray on it. So definitely keep that in the back of your mind as well. Now on the back, and this is where things are actually very interesting. What's very funny is the 11 Pro Max actually kind of originated this type of styling that the 14 Pro kind of you know still stemmed from. So the 11 Pro Max was the first iPhone to bring the frosted glass back, which was amazing, this in the 11 Pro. It was also the first set of iPhones to bring the triple camera setup. Since then, pretty much every single Pro model iPhone has had this type of triple camera setup, but just so look at how much bigger that camera module is. This is the 11 Pro Max one. This was the bigger model of 2019. And look at how much bigger, it's like twice or three times the size. Like it's crazy how much bigger it is. And you are definitely getting better sensors on the iPhone 14 Pro. You're getting wireless charging on both. You are getting this MagSafe capability on the 14 Pro, which is nice. You're getting emergency SOS satellite mode, as well as crash detection on the iPhone 14 Pro, which is nice. And you're still getting lightning ports on the bottom of both of these. And that is kind of it. Like, there's a lot of similarities here and a lot of overlap. But definitely, I think the 14 Pro is the better built one. It's definitely the better one. I think that has more features. But like I said before, I think with the 11 Pro Max, with its, you know, frosted glass back, with its feeling that it has, I think this is still a very good feeling phone. And definitely when I look at these two side by side, definitely lots of overlap, but I think the 11 Pro Max kind of has held up better over time. Like this one is going to probably have more of an impact than probably the iPhone 14 Pro will. Now in terms of software longevity, this is the main advantage or one of the main advantages of getting a newer iPhone like the 14 Pro. This iPhone has already been out for like three years. So because of that, you're going to be getting a longer lasting phone from something like the iPhone 14 Pro than from something like the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So that is another thing to kind of keep in the back of your head that if you're wanting the like the longer lasting phone between all of them, getting something like the iPhone 14 Pro is probably going to make the most amount of sense more than anything else right now. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. Now let's go and do a speed comparison between both these phones. The iPhone 11 Pro Max has that Apple A13 Bionic chip inside of it with four gigabytes of RAM, but the iPhone 14 Pro has that Apple A16 Bionic chip inside of it with six gigabytes of RAM. So let's go and see which one's the faster one between both. Okay, there we go. All the apps are cleared on the background except for that one I just opened. So let me go and clear on the back of these ones. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's go and do phone calls. Three, two, one. And kind of the same thing. I don't really think there was that big of a difference there. I've got to hear music three, two, one. And two different kind of setups on both as well. So let's go and hop out of this one. Let's go and get into settings three, two, one. Kind of the same thing too. 
hopping out of here. Let's go get into their health apps, three, two, one. Okay, kind of seeing a very interesting trend here. Apple TV, three, two, one. Okay, did get into when a pop-up a little bit faster on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, but that could be because, you know, just maybe already had it preloaded. Podcast, three, two, one. 14 Pro Max, oh, 14 Pro was faster there. App Store, 321. Now, I don't know if I have Wi-Fi, so I'm not connected to Wi-Fi here. So we'll go and load out of this one out of here. Let's go and get into Books, 321. The 11 Pro Max, I think, was actually the faster one there. Hopping out of here. Let's go and get into News, 321. The 14 Pro was the faster one. The 11 Pro Max, I guess it was getting into the internet issue again. Stocks, let's get that one. Let's go into notes, three, two, one. Okay, two different pop ups on both. Reminders, three, two, one. Okay, hopping out of here. Let's go and get into mail, three, two, one. 40 Pro is faster. Clock, three, two, one. Okay, hopping out of here. Let's go and get into camera, three, two, one. Okay, I'm going to cancel out of this one. And take note up here, they both say two seconds to take the photo. So let's go and take it, three, two, one. And it looked like the 11 Pro Max kind of got into that one faster. Let's go and open up that camera app. And it did look a little bit faster on the iPhone 14 Pro right there. Hopping out of here, let's get into photos. Three, two, one. Okay, I think the iPhone 14 Pro was slightly faster there. Let's see some other apps we have on both. So let's do Files app. Three, two, one. Okay. I think the 14 Pro again was the faster one slightly. Translate. Three, two, one. 14 Pro again is the faster one there. Contacts. Three, two, one. Okay, about the same. Shortcuts, three, two, one. Okay, let's go hop out of here. iTunes Store, three, two, one. That's when we don't have internet, so we can't even get into it. And ultimately, kind of to kind of sum up this one, I think what we're kind of seeing here is that the iPhone 11 Pro Max is keeping up quite well to the 14 Pro, but I think the 14 Pro is still the faster one, and I think it's going to be the smoother one when it comes down to it, too. I mean, even when I'm scrolling through these specific applications, we're kind of getting a faster type of experience on something like the iPhone 14 Pro than on the 11 Pro Max. Also, you're not able to see this over the camera too well, but the ProMotion display, there's a really big difference between the ProMotion display and the standard 60 hertz that we're getting on the 11 Pro Max as well. So that kind of covers it up there. And the camera department, this was something that was also very interesting. Like I stated before, they kind of have the same type of setup. So they have wide, ultra-wide telephoto lenses. They can do 4K at 60 on the front and the back of both these. But with the 11 Pro Max, with it being somewhat of an older camera, you are missing some features that the, 11, that the 14 Pros kind of have nowadays. So like with this type of camera, you are getting something like you know, still that, you know, 10x zoom. So you're still able to, you know, 10x zoom, which is awesome. You still have that 0.5x zoom. So you have that ability of zooming out a lot, which is really cool. You're still maintaining portrait mode here, as well as standard video mode. Like you can still get some really good photo and video quality from this thing. It's not going to be on par with something like the 14 Pro Max, but I still think, you know, for day-to-day -day type of videos and photos, I think this thing will get the job done. Like I think it's still going to be a pretty decent camera. But with the 14 Pro, these cameras have just became just a completely different level. They're not that big of a difference from the 13 Pro, but from it being a step up from the 13 Pro, I mean, these cameras are very, very good, and they're definitely huge improvements from the previous generations. I mean, we're getting things like 15x zoom versus the 10x zoom on the 11 Pro Max. We're still keeping that 5x zoom or the 0.5x zoom, which is great. You're getting portrait mode, but some other modes you're getting on this phone now are cinematic mode. We did not have that on the 11 Pro Max, so now we have that on this phone, which is great. We're also getting a new action mode, which is really cool. It's like a stabilized type of video. So that's another pretty big advantage of the 14 Pro. We're still getting the standard photo mode here too, and this is definitely a better camera in all angles than the 11 Pro Max, but I will say the 11 Pro Max still has a lot of features built in as well in that camera department. So to kind of sum up this whole entire video, what I'll tell you is, I think the 14 Pro is definitely the better phone here. It's going to give, be giving you better battery life, better performance, better cameras, longevity. It's gonna be a longer lasting phone, but I just don't know if it's worth a thousand dollars per se. Like I think the iPhone 13 Pro would be a much better value if you can go and buy that phone for like 
$750. Here's an iPhone 13 Pro that I own personally that I still use, and that is a very good phone I plan on using for a long period of time. But the iPhone 11 Pro Max, I feel like this is a way better value. Like if you can buy this thing for $500 or less, this is a very good value phone that you can probably keep for probably another three, four years. This phone's not going anywhere anytime soon, and it's still a plenty of fast phone. The battery life on this phone's still good. There's really not too much to complain about here, but definitely if you have the money, go for the 14 Pros. But regardless, I think the 11 Pro Max still stacks up fairly well against the iPhone 14 Pro. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.